Welcome to the basement shop, home of the buildist. Pull up a chair, we're about to get started. Good morning, and welcome back to the basement. So it's coming up on Christmas time, and our family does a gift exchange every year. And uh, this year, I have drawn my brother-in-law, who is one of the primary inspirations for the existence of this channel. It was John who convinced me that people might be interested in watching what goes on here in the shop. So, with John in mind, I drew his name this year, and it's time to make a Christmas present for John. Now, we're not completely making the present. We actually purchased a really nice DeWalt 260 piece uh, tool set, which unlike a lot of these tool sets that you know have a real high tool count, it also has a complete set of quarter inch shallow and deep, three eighths shallow and deep, and even half inch drive shallow and deep sockets running all the way up to 24 millimeters in metric and one full inch in SAE. So it's actually a pretty nice tool set. Now, it was on a wicked bargain because it's missing its tool case. It should have come in a DeWalt modular tool case. I could see it in the picture, but I've never seen it in person. So naturally, I couldn't pass up the deal. What a great and useful thing for John to have but it is of much limited usefulness if it's not in a case. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna build a case. Now, I've done a little bit of advanced work. I took some aluminum U-channel and ran it through the table saw to cut off one of the legs. So now it's an aluminum angle. And furthermore, I did some experimenting with the aluminum to figure out this is an experiment piece to figure out what it was going to be like when it's cut at a you know 45 bevel and bent over and I was able to determine that each of these corners eats up about 3 16 of an inch of linear gap so you have to subtract uh, we have to add 3 16 of an inch for the bend to happen and I was able to determine that this extruded aluminum channel is tempered, which means it'll snap if you don't account for it. So in order to account for it, this one is ready to be bent to final shape. I have first of all, run it through the table saw and cut it to where this, uh, this piece, which is an eighth of an inch thick, I've trimmed out most of a 16th out of it, about half of its thickness. And then this piece has been heat treated and I found this on YouTube and I tried it and it seems to work great. In order to heat treat tempered aluminum to, to anneal it so that it can be bent without snapping, you paint it with magic marker, well Sharpie, you paint it with Sharpie and heat it up until the Sharpie has burned off. And at that temperature, the aluminum has lost its temper and is now annealed to the point that it can be bent. So I have this piece completely pre-cut and ready to bend to shape. This is going to be the frame for the lid of the tool case. And I have this piece ready to lay out and cut when the time comes. And I have pre-cut these sheets of tempered aluminum. They're white on the back and then aluminum on the front side. We will be displaying the aluminum side. And I have pre-cut them to eight inches and 10 inches because this tool case is going to be eight inches high, 10 inches deep. So this will be the lid and the bottom, and these will be the end and sides. Next step is to carefully scribe these to a 45 degree cut. Once they have been scribed, we will feed them into the bandsaw and carefully cut them back to a nice clean 45 degree joint. So I actually made this 45 degree square out of some plate steel. 
because I didn't have anything that comes to this nice, perfect, sharp point that's necessary. This will be a running uh, bond. The, the, this will be a, a join across the back side of the lid. So by cutting it at a 45, you can rivet it in multiple positions. Uh, instead of just being a pure butt joint, it will be a little bit stronger mitered join. So having done the pre-scoring, having pre-heat treated the edges, this will now just basically fold into the predefined dimensions. I say predefined based on where the scoring happened. It's, uh, it's kind of baked into the cake at this point of exactly where and how it's going to fold up. Looks like I, I needed to get farther over to this side with the bandsaw. So I'll trim that up and then perform this one and then we'll cut this at that 45 to join. All right, so we're back a few minutes later. So measure across here and I get 19 and an eighth. This distance plus this distance should be 19 and an eighth. This is exactly nine. So that's 10 and an eighth from this face to where it should be cut off. So I've given that a scribe. I'll set it up on the table saw here with a 45 degree block and cut it through. A regular carbide tip blade will cut this aluminum fine. The only trick is a lot of times I wouldn't necessarily wear safety glasses cutting wood because it's just sawdust. With these aluminum chips, you definitely want to be wearing safety glasses. At this point, this should fold in and these should meet up. should be 10 and 3 eighths. Yep, that's good. 19 and 8. Yeah, that's going to be fine. All right, so next I'm going to measure this interior box and we will cut a piece of that aluminum plate to fit inside this box. The white goes to the inside. All right, so we are basically ready to assemble the lid, but before we actually assemble it, couple little details need to be taken care of. One is I'm going to take this Dremel with this little grinding wheel and I'm going to clean up these bevels where they join to remove any kind of sharp burrs in advance. It'd be a lot easier to clean these up before it has been put into its final shape. Secondly is I took a sample piece of this and uh, checked it to see how it's going to polish. Now, aluminum polishes really well as a general rule, but I've had some types of aluminum that I don't know if they contain magnesium or the way that they're forged or created or whatever. Some types of aluminum is very difficult to polish. This, I just tried it and it polishes it beautifully. So we're going to go ahead and give this some polish before we assemble it because after it's assembled, then you know the corners will be hard to get to. So we'll give this piece of polish. We will uh, kind of clean up the, the rough edges of this and then we'll assemble it. Oh, and 
lastly, the handle. The idea of going with this handle is that this will be a little bit recessed and this box will be more or less flat on top so that you could stack stuff on it or whatever. So we will set this into here uh, in, in whatever way it takes to where it's centered when the handle is up. We won't truly center this handle in the lid. We will center this center line of the handle in the lid. So it will look a little bit odd, a little bit offset when it's not in use, but when it is in use, the box will be balanced. So uh, probably the first thing we should do is get the handle set in, then polish, then deburr, and then assemble this lid. All right, I just realized that I really need to drill at these four corners to establish a radius. So. Basically the cut made, we'll just clean that up with a, a carbide bit in a rotary tool. So I'm using this buffing disc in a side grinder. It's a very fast and aggressive buff. Uh, it's not for everything because it is so aggressive, it's easy to burn stuff. But on stuff like this aluminum, it's just wonderful. trying to mirror polish it I would after I'm done with the brown move on to something with a higher with a, with a finer grit to get a higher polish I don't need to buff all the way out to these far edges because those are going to be covered up by the frame but there you can see original versus polished we're not trying to produce a work of art but if a couple minutes can you know, make a huge difference, then what do we have to do that, right? You know, when we're done with it, we'll hit it with a regular metal polish to try to even out these, uh, any buffing marks. Now in a perfect world, you would never mix aluminum and steel because you get a dissimilar metals corrosion that takes place over time. That's why I'm trying to make this thing 100% out of aluminum, but to a degree, it's not completely possible. There is no handle available that is, uh, unless I make my own kind of ugly looking thing, that is all aluminum. So this is going to be steel. Then the question becomes, should I do a steel rivet, steel on steel, with steel against the aluminum backing plate, or should I do an aluminum rivet and have aluminum here to cause corrosion, potential corrosion right there? Truth be told, I don't know that there's necessarily a perfect answer. What I have on hand are these aluminum rivets, at least the ones that are the correct size. So it looks like we're going with aluminum rivets and if there is a corrosion point, it will be here at the rivet on the steel. There again, I'm talking 20 years down the road. I don't mean in a near time frame, but 
you know, if somebody's looking at this thing 20 and 30 years from now, there will be some corrosion at these points. It is what it is. So that's a 3 16 aluminum rivet. Grab a 3 16 bit. Now, for riveting, I have a standard rivet gun, but truth be told, the thing kind of starts to hurt your hand after a while. So I'm going to use this riveting tool that works using a cordless drill. I just uh, basically bought the cheapest one on Amazon. I think it was $13. Let's see if it does anything. Put that in there. Oh, sure. Feel it tightening up. All right, so now I need a 3 16 drill bit. Now, one thing about riveting is it can be real cantankerous about the pilot hole. Uh, the hole has to be lined up perfectly because the rivets are pretty tight. So what I will do, we will choose a single spot to drill. Get this thing where we're feeling good about it centering. And we'll actually rivet the first point in before we proceed. I can see that I'm going to need Alright, so rivet goes in Voila! Alright, that's definitely going to be easier the hands. So now I'll go through and drill and rivet all these. So now I was looking at um, what's going to be the front and the back and realized that I installed the handle into the piece backwards. So now I'm going to have to drill, remove all these rivets, flip the thing around. Hopefully the holes line up close enough to, to basically use the same holes because I've messed the thing up. So drill these out and get these rivets out and uh, we'll flip it around. Okay, back where we started. This time, we'll install it properly, like so. There we go. Much happier with that. So now, as I was saying, this will be the front. Grab like so, up it goes. All right, so now we can be tight to the front And still close up at the back. I love it. Now, we have to choose rivet. Obviously, we want to choose solid aluminum. Then the question, next question is size, and I think that eighth inch rivets of this thickness will be fun. Now we grab our drill and set it up with an eighth inch drill bit. I think I'm going to align with these existing rivet holes. Because the look of this is important, I'm going to use this as a guide for aligning my drilling. So the clamp is no longer needed. We now have the two rivets to hold it in place. So next we'll want to get these square and then tie in the back.
there we have the lid. I'll just go around and uh, install, you know, more rivets just to make the thing final. Now with the lid of the case completed, the reason we did the lid first, due to the challenges of figuring out the exact resulting dimensions of these corner bends, I figure by starting with the lid, I just have to make the case to fit inside of it. Rather than making the case and trying to fit the lid precisely around it, it's much easier to take off a little than to add a little, as the case may be. As the case may be, see what I did there? So, all we need now is a case that fits snugly to the inside of the lid. Now we'll do the same basic thing as far as we'll make this square frame. Of course, this time the square frame will be the bottom. And then the case sides will stack in it and it will have angles at the outer corners to lock in the outer corners. So the bottom actually needs to be made, the bottom frame needs to be made to fit snugly inside of this case. Not the exact same dimensions but the dimensions just of what would slip inside of it. So I will go through and measure and mark and do the scoring process on this piece to produce walls that fit inside of this case. Cut it on the 45 degrees and all that just like before. And then actually insert the bottom, attach the bottom and then all we have to do is attach the, you know, the four sides with angle brackets going up. So there's our four scores. Now we'll angle these out 45 degrees, you know, anneal it with the torch, and then this will fold up the way we want. All right, so just finished up the bottom one the same as the top one, scored at all the four points, 45 degree, cut these out, anneal this with the torch, and then cut this you know, to, to make the final length. Then I ran this uh, other piece of aluminum through the table saw to bring it up to the final dimension. I'm not gonna bother polishing this. This is gonna be on the very bottom. I don't see any reason to have the very bottom of the thing polished. And then bring it up square. So now we'll just rivet this all around the bottom and then move on to the next step. So having finished up riveting this all the way around, this is now the size to nest right inside of here. So all we need to do is bring this up the eight inches so that this lid will fit on it. These will be basically just cut to length to fit in here. Now I think I, I've decided I'm gonna make this a drop front uh, tool chest. So it will require a couple extra hinges but basically if this is the front it will be a box like this and there will be hinges here and this front panel will drop down open the lid front panel will drop down to where you can get access into here you know fairly easily uh, it takes a little more effort a couple more hinges but i think it makes a meaningfully better uh, result because instead of being this case that you have to dip straight down in you know, with this front coming open, you know, you can kind of uh, access it better. That being the case, um, there will be a hinge here. And these front uh, corner brackets will actually be attached to the front panel, but not the side panels. Uh, but anyway, we'll get there in a minute. So I will measure this distance and cut four pieces, you know, equal to filling this joint. We'll do that next here on the table saw, and then we'll get three of the sides actually attached. So I got the back piece polished and riveted in place. This piece will be riveted in place with uh, an angle bracket coming up here. Same on that end, 
and then we'll, we'll manufacture the front plate to fill this gap. It'll be hinged right here and it will have angle brackets that come up and capture these sides. This end piece is the full length to go tight against the angle bracket. Not only will this be prevented by the outside angle bracket from going this way, but it'll be nestled into the pocket formed inside here. So there'll actually be a slot that this will kind of join into. So that will lock in really nice and tight. So uh, we'll get these polished and installed and then we'll manufacture the front piece. So now I've just finished up with the end pieces. Cut a piece of angle here to, to cover this end and then rivet the end piece into the channel, rivet the angle over it. That locks this all together. So now all we have to do is create a front. It will be this height and it will have the angles attached to the side so that the angles come down with it. The only trick is it should be the same length as this, but I'm actually going to back it off um, mm, three thirty seconds of an inch, uh, 50 thousandths, in order to have it not be so snug. The gap I was describing earlier, I'll give it, you know, just a little bit of wiggle room so that it can uh, make its way into that gap without binding up. Measure from here to here, subtract about 50 thousandths and cut for that piece and its height will be from here to there. All right, so here's a close-up of how this is going to interlock. This angle will be attached to here. These will be joined right there. And then this side piece will be captured between that flange and that notch. So I just have it clamped up in such a way that there's just a small gap between those two. And then I've confirmed that this dimension from here all the way across will fit underneath the lid. So that should work just like that. So all I have to do is attach these with rivets and then we will put hinges right across there. So here is the drop front in its final position. Hinges need to go here. Now the deal is I need to fill this gap so that, that hinge, you know, because this is back set from here. So we're gonna put a solid strip of aluminum across there that these hinges can ride and then these tops are also going to be filled they'll be filled with these cut off strips so these up here will be full sized to correspond to the bottom but then this one i will just make like a it'll be like a three quarters of an inch strip just to catch that hinge right there I'm going to do three hinges. Um, two would probably be adequate, but the lifting pressure of the whole thing is going to be on it, and it's going to weigh about 40 pounds. So I figure it can't hurt to do an extra hinge, if you will. So we'll do three across the front and three for the lid later on. So now we have the filler piece installed, and with the door clamped in its final location, we can just lay these hinges out. They're just sitting here. Lay these hinges out and drill and rivet them. So, as I say, three hinges, both sides and in the center. And then as soon as I release these clamps, the drop front will hinge downward. So, got several rivets in here. There will be another hinge. There will be more rivets, but just uh, it's time to take a break. But just to kind of show the progress, there it is with the drop front that opens up. There again, that'll make the case a lot more, you know, accessible to the inside. So I think it was worth the extra effort. All right, so here's where we're at. We have the upper band installed all the way around. And I've gone through, I started with a flap disc and then went to a orbital sander and got these edges all nice and smooth and deburred. So now all we have to do is set the lid on here what I'll do, the lid is, you know, that high. I'm going to cut a spacer to go front and back to keep the lid uh, set upward a little bit to where I can set it in place there and then attach the hinges in that configuration. Back here, the hinges will keep the gap. I won't need anything. 
but on this front side up inside the lid i will install the spacer that i use i'll actually rivet to the underside of the lid so that it rests on that spacer right here on this surface uh, cut some spacers that are oh what are they going to be give or take a half an inch set the lid on there and attach some hinges okay coming into the home stretch now i have installed three hinges across the back you can see i had to put thickness plates down here to bring the hinge out flush with this you know rim of the lid three hinges evenly spaced rivets through all and i have completed all three hinges across here same process as i described earlier so at this point the drop front works the lid opens and closes one uh, difficulty I ran into is that these rivets that are protruding through were striking the rim right here. It would have been alleviated if my hinges were, were thicker from the hinge point out to the edge of the hinge, but they're a fairly small hinge. Stainless steel, it was a good deal on Amazon. I think I got 20 of them for $8 or something. So a pretty good deal as far as that goes slightly smaller than i would have liked but can be made up for by using three of them and i just had to deal with this problem so what i did is where the rivets are striking the case i just took a carbide burr and kind of created a little bit of a divot it's not visible with the lid closed at all and it's only visible with the lid open if you kind of get back here and look down there so it's no big deal then i took advantage of this hole that was here, put this bolt through. It's a flush head bolt, so you know it basically doesn't uh, stick out. And uh, countersunk that hole just a little bit, put that bolt in, bolted it in with a nut, and then attached this washer. And the washer has a tiny little hole drilled through for the stainless steel chain to fit in. I got this stainless steel chain at some kind of an auction. I think it was the, uh, to hold the weights of a clock in some kind of a setting. I'm not really sure. But anyway, it's a fairly rugged little chain, stainless steel, you know, it kind of fits the aesthetic and, and it works perfectly for this purpose. Down here, we did another little washer here, tiny little hole drilled in it. And then here, I went ahead and drilled and tapped for this screw to engage this aluminum. The reason being that this is where the lid closes. I didn't really want anything sticking out um, either on the inside or the outside. So by using this uh, countersunk screw and screwing right into that threaded hole, it's nice and neat and tight. So the very final and straightforward step, we want to install them, rivet them on, such that the lid is tightly closed and then the latch is in its closed position. Now these particular latches are a little bit spring-loaded this big spring here actually allows this uh, latch to flex outward a little bit. And I think the idea there is that I will actually put it in place a little bit tighter than possible, than possible. And when you twist it closed, it will engage that spring loaded portion and actually, you know, have it kind of in a, in a relative death grip. So I will install these snugger rather than looser. We definitely don't want them to be loose and rattling. So step one is just to drill and install, you know, these two upper catches as long as they're, you know, over here to the sides and, and consistent from side to side. So I will rivet those on. There again, choice of rivet. We're attaching stainless steel to aluminum. Uh, I think that the aluminum rivet against the stainless steel will not corrode, at least not substantially. Um, and if it does corrode, I'd rather have the rivet corrode away over time and be able to be re-riveted than have the hole to corrode out over time and actually, you know, have a, a damage to the case. So I'm going to use aluminum rivets. So we'll rivet one there, one there. And then we'll align these things in a way that's a little bit, you know, over snug, if you will. And then, and then clamp those down. Now, one thing I'm realizing here, 
uh, this lip overhangs and I want this body of this latch to kind of be up under it. And as such, I need to not have this catch up too high or else the body of that is not going to fit up under there. But other than that, a little drilling and riveting, uh, nothing dramatic to, to look at. So, riveted the latches on, just as we talked about. So at this point, the tool trays just sit right in, kind of reaching around the corner. It's not as hard in real life as it looks when I'm doing it for the video. In go the three trays. Bring up the drop front. Close the lid. And Bob's your uncle. One custom aluminum tool case. And as always, thanks for watching. And Uncle John, Merry Christmas.